Hello everybody, my name is Chris and this is another episode of Homes in 5. And today what I'm going to be doing for you is running through the new Cynogen Mod 9 ROM for the Samsung Galaxy S2 and a few other devices, which is the update called RC2. So if you do have a device that is compatible with Cynogen Mod 9, then congratulations, you're in for a very, very, very good experience. Um, but as you can see here, I've got the, uh, the different lock screen. I'm using the Galaxy S2. I installed the ROM a little while ago, but um, it's just taken me a while to get used to everything that is actually in the ROM. So... I'm just going to run you through everything, but you can see the different lock screen, the numbers are the same. If you've had the uh, ice cream sandwich stock ROM on your Galaxy S2, you will notice a few small things that are similar, but a lot of it is different. Um, this is basically putting a stock ice cream sandwich ROM onto your phone with a few extra things. Basically, it's made for performance. I know my battery life did cut a lot installing this, but it's a brand new phone, and the battery life lasts generally, if you don't use it heavily, about two days. Uh, getting into the phone though, we'll notice the lock screen is very different. I haven't changed, I haven't put the slide lock on or anything or face unlock. But uh, we see the lock screen here and you can actually customize that to make it, um, it comes with just the unlock and the camera on the side, but I've actually added Facebook, Twitter and my messaging shortcuts in there. But we'll unlock the phone. And I'm pretty sure that's in focus right now. Let me just, there we go. I've just got to use the camera, getting used to that as well. But uh, this is the home screen. We don't have TouchWiz. I absolutely hated TouchWiz. I'm glad that I've got this now, the stock Android launcher as opposed to that. Um, but down the bottom here you can see we've got the phone, people, the uh, the app drawer, sorry, uh, messaging and settings. You can have the four different ones down there as well as the apps in the middle. Uh, two screens there and the over scroll feature ends up bringing up that blue light and also pulling it to the side. Not a big thing but just a nice little um, UI thing that's really nice. A uh, little drop down bar there is also transparent if you can see, sorry I don't need to bring it forward, you can see there, you can see the other side. Uh, and we do have five options up the top. We have Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, uh, GPS, uh, volume and all that. And then the last one on the side is a torch, which actually turns on the LED light on the back of the phone, which is really handy. I've used that a lot when, uh, actually, the most it's come in handy is when I've been out and I can't see the keys, see the keyhole, and I turn it on, which helps a lot. We also have a little setting shortcut in there. And uh, showing you the app drawer, actually, there's, um, oh, actually, I'll show you some other things. There's some cool transitions you can actually customize, which is a, is a nice feature. You can change a lot um, on this ROM. But a transition feature, when I'm swiping across, it actually fades in and out between screens, which is good as well. Uh, we'll go into the app drawer. And same thing here, except they kind of fly in from the back as well. They just kind of fold over the top of each other, which is nice. Another setting you can customize is to make the apps and widgets, uh, you can see the two tabs, up the top there, instead of tapping them to change over between the two, you can actually make it so that you can just slide seamlessly. There you go, and slide right over. Uh, these are all the apps that are built in, and then there's some others that are installed from what I've downloaded, like Hotmail, Facebook. Um, and you can actually change the setting as well to be able to adjust the size of basically any app um, or widget, sorry, that you like. So, uh, one that I know you can do is this one here. So, you can't change that by default, but if you see there, I can actually adjust the size as I see fit, no pun intended, but it already fits, everything is the way I like it. Little torch widget down there, and another thing I like about the Android, or the Cyanogen Mod 9 ROM, and this just general Android app, is the folder sound thing you can do, like a lot, like the iPhone, um, don't really like Apple, but I like that you can make the folders uh, down the bottom there as well. It's a nice feature, and being able to rename them and put everything where you want it to be is just really convenient. Uh, going into, that's pretty much the user interface there uh, in general. Another thing that has carried over, by the way, is the awesome thing you can turn on is changing the brightness with the slider. Uh, but having it like that is way too bright, so I'll turn it down. Uh, moving on to the settings, I'll show you what you can customize. But the general ice cream sandwich look again, uh, same as the Galaxy Nexus, which is this, this is what I always think of. Whenever I see that background and that kind of user interface down the bottom, I just think Nexus. And I actually wanted that phone at one point, but I'm glad I got the Galaxy S2. Better camera. Uh, we've got Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, data usage, and all those settings are basic. And the interface, there's a lot you can change, like I told you before. There's the home screen. You can change the number of screens, your default screen. By default, you have, I think, five screens, and three is your default screen. You can also change your grid size. Mine's 4x4, four four, but you can change that around as well. And then there's vertical horizontal padding around the edges of your, uh, your screen. Search bar, so if you want a persistent Google search bar on your home screen, it will appear at the top, but I turn that off just to be able to, I guess, save battery. I don't know if it uses more. Resize any widget, as I was explaining before, and you can also hide the labels of your icons, and there are transition effects between uh, different ones, and these are all just really self-explanatory down the bottom. I don't need to read them out for you. You've had enough time. Let's move on. I've got the phone tilted, by the way, because I don't want this reflection. 
Uh, in the drawer, again, you can uh, change things around. This is your app drawer that I was talking about. These are all the uh, self-explanatory effects. Again, and general is the haptic feedback. Oh, sorry, not haptic feedback. The rotate screen. My mistake. Uh, we'll go back and the lock screen. There you go. So uh, one thing you can't do by default is use face unlock. I don't use it regardless, but if you do want face unlock, you need to flash it with the G apps zip file that you will also need to install when you're flashing uh, this ROM. You do need clockwork mod as well to be able to do that. So don't forget to hack your phone. Uh, something that I do like uh, bef uh, is the lock screen, sorry not the lock screen, when you lock the phone, I didn't know how to go. There's owner info which I'll show you, but while I'm showing you that, I can show you, you remember, you remember when you turn off an old tube TV, it kind of fades out, just like that. I really like the way it locks like that. It's just something small, another UI or interface kind of thing that I really like, but if you can see up the top there, I'll change the focus again. If I can, will it focus? It won't, so I'm going to have to click it and zoom in instead. See, home's in five, just up there. Uh, you can actually change that around in the settings as well, so you can put owner info in your phone. So whenever you unlock or lock the phone, you've got that little owner info piece popping up. Same with weather, display calendar, so what your next event will be. And there are the slider shortcuts, like my Facebook, Twitter, and messages shortcuts I added on. Screen security for your different lock methods. Themes, there's only one. I'm guessing there'll be a new theme or extra themes when the final ROM has come out. For now, there's just the base one. We go into system. There's the status bar at the top. You can change your battery and signal to display a percentage or just disappear completely. Your notification drawer, you can change a lot of options in here as well. You can hide the scroll bar. You can turn off haptic feedback. Uh, you know, all these are just kind of self-explanatory again. You've had time to read them. Let's move on. And wallpaper and font size, again, very self-explanatory. Sound, display, storage, battery are all basic stuff, as well as apps and advanced. Actually, if we go into advanced, yeah, there you go, there's a HSPA. Negative mode, change the screen around, calibration data for your gyro sensor and all that. And vibration, I've turned off the haptic feedback on my phone though, because I don't really like it. It wastes my battery too. There's different profiles for the sounds you want. I like that. That didn't come in the stock ROM for the Galaxy S2. You had to pick either silent, vibrate, or on. I don't really like those options. I have the profiles there set up the way that I like them. Uh, accounts and sync are simple, location, uh, security, language, backup, they're all the same. And the last thing that I can really show you uh, that's different apart from about phone is the performance. So these are some things that you don't want to play around with. This is more for the guys who know what they're doing in terms of hacking. I merely know how to install these. So credit goes to all the people who have made this ROM as opposed to me who is just installing it. So I'm not going to play with any of that. We'll go into about phone and we'll just zoom in there for you. Oopsies. So we've got the model number, Android 404, baseband, and the kernel, and the CPU, memory, Cyanogen mod version 9.0.0, sorry. And that's pretty much all you need to see. Um, there's no Easter egg, like if you tap the Android version over and over again. Oh, it does. It worked. It didn't do that last time I tried it. Okay, so the Android dude pops up. If you hold it down, he'll turn into the Nan gingerbread, or Nan ice cream sandwich. Flying pass. It didn't work last time I tried it. That's something strange but yeah there's a little easter egg there okay my mistake and that's basically Cyanogen Mod 9 running and working uh, the camera does work I can show you that I'm gonna do a little picture inside the picture but I'm taking a photo that uh, worked that's 8 megapixels and we can also pick movies um, yo dog we heard you like movies in your movies so we put a movie in your movie so you can watch a movie while you're watching a movie and there you work as well. So that's fantastic. Zoom on the bottom there. And really, that's all I can show you in terms of the latest ROM from Cyanogen Mod 9. So uh, keep your eye out for the latest ROM. I guess things will work a little bit more stable when it's finally finished. I know that sometimes my message app has crashed. Uh, Wi-Fi has played me around a little bit. And the GPS, I haven't actually tested myself. So I presume that it does work though. Uh, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the review. Nothing too big, but it is a very nice ROM. I highly recommend that you pick it up or get a phone that is compatible with it, otherwise uh, download Cyanogen Mod 7, which is for gingerbread. There's a gingerbread ROM, a custom one as well. That is very nice. Anyway, this has been another episode of Homes in 5. Comment, rate, subscribe, do all the cool stuff, and feel free to check out my Facebook, Twitter, and Google Plus in the description below. This has been another episode of Homes in 5. Bye-bye! <laughs>